Hi there, this is uh, Monday, the 21st of February, 2022, and greetings from Sunset, Texas. Um, we are set up camp out here, and uh, not much going out here at this little uh, RV park. There's a lot of open spaces, but uh, um, you know, the pedestals are in good shape, and the uh, water's in good shape, and the sewer seems to work, so hey, you know what more can you ask for? Um, gonna be here for a week and then uh, continue on to Houston but uh, stay tuned for our adventures one thing I don't think I've mentioned to you on this but uh, last week I started having problems with my internet connection through fire Wi-Fi or uh, I forget what the the subcontractor is that they've got but uh, yeah supposedly some sort of issue with the AT&T service so that's kind of sucky but uh, I've addressed that and uh, I should be good to go at least for the next few days and then I may try looking for a different provider. So stay tuned. Well, if you can hear that, and I'm sure you can, that's the rain landing on the roof of the motorhome. Greetings from Sunset, Texas, which is about an hour north of Dallas. Um, this is where I'm stopping for the week. Uh, after Amarillo and then uh, next week going to Houston but uh, this week I'm in Sunset and uh, we're getting some rain here this evening uh, it's more like thunderstorms and uh, it's just really dumping on us here you can get a sense for the uh way that it's raining out there we got thunder and we got lightning I'm not hearing the thunder so I'm thinking that uh, it's quite a ways away but there's some serious lightning out there well good morning today is Wednesday the 24th I think of February I know it's Wednesday I just don't know what the date is uh, greetings from Sunset Texas here which is about an hour north of Dallas and the wind chill out this morning is 10 um, it's 19 degrees air temperature and then the wind chill is taking it down to 10 so it's pretty uh, pretty chilly we had freezing rain last night and off and on this morning so um, it's pretty chilly it's very slick um, having to watch my step when I'm walking Remy right now I'm walking in leaves so I'm not too worried about it but uh, yeah at any rate uh, the RV park here is not bad um, the electricity is not quite as solid as it was in Amarillo it's dropped out a few times but I think that's more of a regional thing than it is the park thing um, they've got new managers here at the Sunset RV park so they are um, working on uh, repairing things and getting things in working order. So it's, uh, you know, they're, they're making progress and that's, that's good for them. My, my hat's off to them on that. Um, so yeah, the rest of the week's just gonna be a work week. Probably gonna have to do a software upgrade Friday night, um, which is gonna tie me up Friday night and Saturday. So I don't know how much sightseeing I'm gonna get this weekend. Hopefully Sunday I'll get out to do some of that. So. Well, it's Thursday, and we had uh, more blowing snow, or not blowing snow, blowing uh, freezing rain. So we got a ground that is very icy this morning, and uh, walking very flat-footed, because this is probably the slickest I've ever experienced. And uh, so yeah, so it's uh, it's miserable out. Well, hi there, and uh, we're still in Sunset, Texas here. I uh, got the word though today that uh, the state of California's telework policy is going to be changing, and I'm going to have to sign a new telework agreement. And that policy is that uh, state workers can telework, but they have to telework from within inside the state of California. So um, I am going to have to uh, 
uh, after I finish my visits up here in Texas, I'm going to head back to California. I'm not going to be able to go to Georgia and Connecticut and uh, Indiana and some other places that I'd hope to. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. I uh, knew when I set out on this venture that policies might change. And, uh, you know, uh, I've only got a few years until retirement, so we'll head back to California. I'll spend some time exploring there. And uh, then, you know, when I retire, then I'll hit the road again. Well, hi there. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's cold out. If you look at those steps on the motorhome close enough, you'll see that the carpeting has got ice on it. And that's Remy's toenails on the lower step that scratched as she tried to get out. And all that white area that you see is ice. And everything's frozen. And as you can see, there's ice coming off the Jeep. So uh, the furnace is definitely getting the workout. As you can see, freezing rain when it hits the car and then it just kind of trickles down and then freezes attaching itself to the car. It's been uh, rather interesting here in Texas. Well, hi there. And uh, today is Saturday. The 26th of February 2022. It's been a cold and uh, icy, rainy week uh, at camp. And today is uh, at least not rainy. It's it's in the low 30s, but it's at least uh, tolerable. And so Remy and I are out for a little adventure today to go explore around. Um, the area north of Dallas there's a state park down here that we're going to go down and check out and then tomorrow we're going to go to the uh, JFK Memorial so stay tuned we're uh, still going to get out and do some exploring it may not be quite as pretty as uh, White Sands New Mexico and uh, some of those other experiences because you know it's just gray and cloudy out but uh, we're going to we're going to make the most of it, so stay tuned. Okay, well, we have paid our uh, entrance fee to the Fort Richardson State Park here at the little visitor center, and we're going to go in and uh, check out Fort Richardson, so come along and uh, we'll check it out together. So here we are at Fort Richardson, overlooking some of the uh, buildings that are out here from uh, um, back in the day, as they say. This fort was originally built in 1867 and at one point in time was the largest military installation in the U.S. It was established initially for uh, protecting the frontier, as it were, from savage Indians. Uh, but it has also served as a National Guard headquarters over the time, and it also was a base for um, U.S. military back in World War II. And dating back to the movie Bridge Over the River Kwai, there were Americans represented in that movie, and the Americans that were represented in that movie were from here, Fort Richardson. So we're going to go take a look at some of the buildings. So this is a... Um, renovated um, barracks that dates back to the 1800s and uh, as you can see the roof has been obviously redone but the uh, the walls and the substance of the chimneys are the same and uh, this is what uh, the uh, military uh, stayed in both the uh, officers and non-commissioned officers here at the base this is the Commandant's Quarters. Uh, it's going under undergoing major restoration right now, but this is where the Commandant of the fort would stay at. So, you know, as you kind of look at the expanse of this area out here, if you think back to some period time movies that, um, you know, historically cover the 
um, Civil War and, and the uh, American Indian War, you can just envision old tents out here, and I'm sure they probably do reenactments out here where they've got um, canvas tents put up. But it's a, it's a large area, uh, and, and you really do get a sense as to what um, it was like to live out here. Unfortunately, I can't take Remy into any of the buildings, but this is the nature building that shows examples of some of the wildlife that lives around out here. Now this building where the nature center is was actually a uh, part of a well house that was built in 1940 uh, salvaged from uh, stone that was part of the third county courthouse. It uh, used to be the top of a 11 foot well um, that produced water uh, at about 200 feet and fed the town of Jacksboro, which is just nearby. So here's the Jacksboro and Fort train station, the old train depot. And then that building over there is the Fort Commissary. Now the train depot was built back in the 1890s as opposed to the 1860s when uh, the rest of the fort was built. And over here, we have a train trestle that uh, was used when uh, it crossed the river here adjacent to the fort. And then you'll see over here to the left, we have the main gate for Fort Richardson and the fort out there in the distance. Now they did have a limited number of enlisted man's barracks here as well. And they also, uh, as part of it, had the non-commissioned officers section of the barracks. But they didn't have enough barracks for all the enlisted men. So as I had indicated uh, earlier, this large field out here would frequently be filled with tents of uh, enlisted men uh, camping out here. It would probably be uh, somewhat desirable in the summertime in that you could get some fresh air, but in the wintertime, tents would be just brutal. And this is uh, the magazine that uh, was used for storing ammunition back in the, the 1800s. Very thick building. And though the uh, door is gone, you can walk up here you can see inside the magazine very cool this is the guardhouse or what's left of it and this was actually the jail uh, for the fort area and it was used for um, soldiers who had broken rules or regulations and uh, more frequently though used for housing indians uh, that were captured during uh, the fort's operation here and during the American Indian War. And here stands the old bakery. That's kind of cool. Just cool to see these old buildings still being around over a hundred years later. So here is the base hospital, or the Fort Hospital. And you'll hear in some other segments that I've already actually filmed that I refer to this as the administration building, but it's really the base hospital. So there's a kitchen here in the base hospital and a uh, dining hall in the base hospital. Um, or yeah, and, and I call them the, the admin building, but they're really the uh, uh, base hospital. So just keep that in mind as you watch the rest of this video. Now we're at the main building and here's the mess hall. As you can see, the bench seats and the tables and the bowls and the food. 
I uh, <laughs> don't want to even think about how old that food is. It probably does not date back to the American Indian War, but it's probably something that's gotten old for a while. And we saw the bakery building earlier, but this is the kitchen that's on the back side of the main building. And uh, from another window looking in the kitchen, there is, uh, there's all the silverware up on one of the barrels. Here is the infirmary of the main building. And you can see mosquito netting up around some of the beds there. In the Army Navy Journal here on this nightstand. <laughs> so this part of the building is the base hosp or the uh, operating room. Rather primitive tools that they had there. Don't want to even think about what some of them were used for. So this is kind of how we start our mornings after we Daddy gets up and takes his shower. Then Remy comes over and Daddy rubs her belly. Daddy rubs her belly. She's a good girl. A minute after Dad rubs the belly for a minute, then he says, okay, come on, let's get a hug. And then she comes and she sits next to me and I give her a hug. You love you, baby girl. Thank you, Rescue Ranch, for bringing Remy into my life, huh, baby girl? Yes. Okay, get down. And then Dad makes the bed, and then we go do breakfast and stuff like that. Well, good Sunday morning, and it is the 27th of February, 2022. We are just entering into Fort Worth, Texas. And as you can see, there's a little haze in the sky, but otherwise not a cloud in the sky which means that it's uh, finally the weather is improving here in Texas, which that's, uh, that's a good thing. We're headed down to see the JFK Memorial uh, at Dealey Plaza in uh, Dallas. And then we'll do some uh, first of the month shopping to get uh, provisions put on board. And tomorrow we're headed down to Houston for our last week um, of the initial part of the plan of this trip and then uh, we'll be heading back to California. We're now approaching Dallas and uh, it's a little hazy here, kind of like reminds me of the LA Basin, but we're only a couple minutes out from the uh, JFK Memorial. Hi there, well we are in Dallas, Texas and uh, as you can see by that building they, uh, they do do things big in Dallas here, or big in Texas here. Uh, Remy and I are down here. Uh, we're going to go check out the JFK Memorial. And we are going to see what we can see around in the area. We've got uh, a beautiful day today. And uh, just looking forward to checking it all out. So uh, let's go check it out. Well, here we are in downtown Dallas. And there is the uh, part of the JFK Memorial. And this is a cool building. It's like, I don't know, it's a church or whatever, but we're gonna find out. I'm just kinda looking around down here in the uh, plaza area. So the monument is meant to represent an open tomb because JFK was an open person willing to consider other ideas. So that's the symbolism of this particular monument. So just adjacent to the JFK Memorial is what is now referred to as the Old Red Museum, but it's the first courthouse here in Dallas. Very cool building, very cool. So this cabin 
though not associated with anybody in particular, apparently is indicative of the kind of cabins built back in the early 1800s by settlers who would uh, establish homesteads in Texas. It's always cool to see old buildings like this where you see advertisements from days gone by that were etched on the sides of brick buildings. And uh, as you can probably gather, at one point in time, this is probably attached to another building that at one point in time occupied this parking lot. But just very interesting. This is looking off to uh, the JFK Plaza, I'm sorry, the Founders Plaza, where the JFK Memorial is on the other side of those trees there. And this is the location from the filming of the infamous Zapruder film of the location where JFK was shot from the sixth floor of the book depository. So there is the infamous book depository from uh, where JFK was shot as he came down Elm Street here. He was shot as they were preparing to go down this underpass that's down there. And in that location, in that building, there's actually a Holocaust Museum. This is the Book Depository building. And uh, we're going to go in and check out, or I'm going to go in and check out the Sixth Floor Museum here at Dealey Plaza. And Remy's taking a break in the car right now. I therefore ask the Congress, above and beyond the increases I have earlier requested for space activities, to provide the funds which are needed to meet the following national goals. First, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. It comes from Dallas, Texas. John F. Kennedy one of the best known men on earth, has been assassinated by one of the most obscure, a misfit named Lee Harvey Oswald, who thus finds a place in history as he could not in life. Hi there, I'm out here in Dealey Plaza um, the building over my shoulder here is the former book depository from uh, where JFK was shot and that window right there is where he was shot from. Uh, it's a very moving experience. If you ever find yourself in Dallas, I, you need to come and experience this. Uh, it's probably the most moving um, museum experience that I've ever had in my life. It, uh, Maybe it's moving to me because I was born in 62, just before JFK was assassinated. But from a history perspective, it's just truly fascinating. Uh, they got it right. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty emotional about it, but uh, you know, that's okay. Uh, today's my last day and last full day in Dallas. Tomorrow morning, Remy and I are gonna pull up from our campground in Sunset and head towards Houston, Texas. Very glad I came out to see this today. Uh, extremely glad I took in the museum. That was extremely meaningful. Uh, so like I said, if you're ever in the Dallas area, even if all you've got is two hours, uh, you won't need two hours, but uh, you know, two hours will be plenty to see what you need to see. If you've got four hours, that's even better but uh, please come see this. It's very moving, very emotional, very important for all Americans to see. One more closing thought. Um, 
with the uh, JFK Memorial behind me. What was interesting for me to observe here is that people of all nationalities, shapes, sizes, colors, creeds, uh, straight, gay, the whole shooting match, come by here to see the memorial and to witness it and to uh, frankly have their picture taken with it. And it, it really speaks back to a historical time that a lot of people uh, can relate to. So it's obviously JFK had a reach far beyond that of just Americans and uh, his spirit lives on and that's cool.